two seconds here boys and there we go all right we've got this going we've got the live stream up and running now just to wait for you guys to total in see what we've got here and see what we can work with of course you're going to see the first thing first is we're trying to re-sign Yakov trend and we're trying to give him a, an extension to start this live stream off he wants 1.3 mil for three years I don't see why I wouldn't give it to him that's for sure he's been serviceable down in the NHL even to keep him down there for another season or bring him up into the NHL to replace Jesper Foss or whatever we have to do with him would not be a bad time for him that's for sure so guys I'm just going to give you guys a few seconds so as I can tally up how many people we're going to carry for this live stream and then we'll be good to go from there let me know if you're in the chat right now let me know how your day is going I am pretty much actually wide awake for this one finally like Yesterday's Oilers live stream, man, I was napping, I was sick, it was a bad, bad time, that's for sure. So guys, say hi, say good morning, I'm going to tell you good morning, good morning guys. And let's go get this offer for Yakov trending in there because he needs to be there. Josh Curry, we're going to let him walk at 66 overall and 27 years of age. So that's pretty simple, it's pretty simple. Unrated Origins, welcome in. See, like I said, he said good morning. Good morning back to you. And we're going to go double check the roster. This is just kind of a list of who we're about to lose in free agency. Brodziak, Foss, Cassian, Ratty, Strom, Bear, and Benning are kind of our only guys that we have issues with. What I would like to do is ideally trade Matt Benning. He's really not panned out into anything. Two goals, two assists. He's had that plus 11 rating the year previous. He was a minus 11 rating, or a minus 12, pardon me. And he had 103 shots. Like, how do you only have a 1% shooting percentage? That just doesn't even seem real to me, right? So, Matt Benning, yes, sure, he's been great in real-life NHL. Like, in the NHL for the Oilers in real life, he's been fantastic. 21 points last year. But he doesn't put up the points in NHL 19 and I need to figure out what where and how we can get more points from our defense So Matt Benning may be an option to be moved out of Edmonton Or just not re-signed as a restricted free agent guys You'll have to make that choice when we get there, but first off this episode is all all about the draft Let's go view the draft class and show you what we're working with heading in to the 2020 draft it's Dante Scott is your top overall pick, 37 goals, 56 assists in a lot. A lot of Oilers, it seems, are screwed by EA Systems. Well, it's the same thing with the Blue Jays for some reason in MLB The Show. Everybody just uh, seems to hate on my teams, that's for sure. Alexis Lafreniere, all he's listed is that two-way forward. How about 115 points in 67 games played? This guy has got to be elite. And he's only a plus six, so you imagine how much ice time he logs 1918 for the Ramuski Oceanic. And you see everything, wow, is it shooting's an A plus, his puck skills an A, his sense is an A minus, his skating an A, physical B, defense B, that's not bad at all. And he is equivalent to Patrick Kane is what they're saying. Hans Scholes, he looks pretty solid as well. A lot of A minuses. A Mark Stone type player. I think he's a lot better than that. A couple of defensemen in here. And realistically, what we're looking for is the gems, right? Because we don't have a top, top pick this year. So you've got a Pettinger. you got some guys in the second round that I could choose from, right? Jacobs looks to be a very good pickup for us. Or you could end up picking up Bullrice. Bullrice is looking to be all right as well, but he's a defensive defenseman. So I'm not exactly going to say that I need to pick him up. Malden. Ryan Malden in the third round. Low top six potential, 20 goals, 24 assists. He looks like he could be useful. Haven't played NHL 19 yet. How is it? Jake, it is rough online, my man. It's a rough time online just because of they haven't found that delicate balance of how everything's supposed to work. And it's just been up and down gameplay all season long so far. Pettinger, Matteo Pettinger. Well, he's only played 15 games, had 13 minutes on ice. And you see he's only a top four low potential. But in the third round, I could definitely go for somebody like a Matteo Pettinger for sure. So we don't need to sort by name. We need to sort by potential. And this is where it gets very interesting, boys. That You saw in the live stream yesterday, Lee Capaduca and Vince Byron are both medium elite goaltenders. 
medium elite what am i saying medium franchise boys come on it is going to be a good time to hopefully pick up one of these guys with a draft pick lee capaduca we've scouted him all season long he is the equivalent to patrick roy and then you've got Byron, who's a B minus, C minus, B athletic, and equivalent to Roberto Luongo. So you want to talk about franchise goalies. Those two are very good. Uh, you see Lee Capaduca, not very good overall in terms of puck control, but his poise, endurance, all that doesn't look that great. But a medium franchise potential and that high, I think we even pick up both and see what we can get out of them, make it a little bit more of a specialized draft for goaltenders right pick up a couple of goaltenders even if we have to trade for a third round pick because that's exactly what lee capaduca would be actually probably a fourth round pick at that point i hit connect welcome in how you doing today let me know as you guys see there's some good options for us in this draft so let's go check the draft board and then we'll go get going a couple more days towards the draft to see if we have anyone popping up or watch listed guys a lot of good guys on this list that's for sure we're hoping to figure out one of these guys and get a great pick we have a second a third two fourths a sixth and a seventh so we're without a fifth but i don't think that's going to exactly be a issue for us if you know what i mean that's that could really benefit us where are you projected to pick oh yes i guess i should have uh drop boarded that and shown you guys where we're projected to pick so we're projected to pick anywhere between 19th to 21st we took an l2 new jersey though yeah i know i hit connect it was a rough game against new jersey that's for sure but like i said we're projected to pick about 20th in the nhl this year i can probably show you a little bit better via the standings but uh let's go check it out i think we should own the 20th or 21st pick based on what i've seen and entire league let's go down the list and down the list we actually are 20 12th so yeah somewhere in the 20 20th 21st list or even 18th 19th i'm not even sure somewhere in there so let's go figure out who's going to be the ahl champion and then get on with it we lost in the stanley cup final to the columbus blue jackets in five games it was an absolute embarrassment for us that's for sure it was we just didn't come to play. Our goaltending got blown up, and our defense really didn't work. So Yakov Trenin accepts his new contract. He's a fourth-line forward, so that allows us to potentially trade Tobias Reeder for a third-round pick. Set ticket prices. We'll make sure we get this going. Um, you know what? Let's up it. Let's down the lower bowl a little bit here. Club seats down by 100, and executive suites up by 50. And the franchise continues along, and the AHL stuff isn't coming to an end anytime quick. They must really be going the distance in the AHL this season. 27 and 33, so it's the Bridgeport Sound Tigers. Well, you, you will have the 30th pick if you lost in the finals. Okay, so that makes sense. I, I figured as much, but I didn't want to venture and say there. So, okay, we're good to go. Maximum player salary cap is 17 million. Could you imagine paying a guy 17 million? We'll figure it out. 87.045 is good. Lower the beer price for Rogers Place. Yeah, no doubt it is, okay? If I, uh, if I could charge for beer in this game, I would, but it's unfortunately just pop. But I, I definitely wish I could lower the beer prices. I went to, what was it? One of the last games last season against Minnesota, and me and my girlfriend were going to grab beer, and then it's like, whatever seven bucks or whatever it was for just a small little cup of beer and i'm like ah yeah not happening not happening at all and i went to roger's place of pop was five bucks yeah i know it's absolutely brutal there that's for sure let's see what thrash is saying 300 substance launch good for you thrash let's see any movement nothing there any new gems that we need to discover no everybody's still there and let's see if Capaduca and our man Going. I ended up not buying the sandwich. I just went to McDee's after the game. That's usually a good call because it's late at night anyway, and that's a good call. So, anybody we've discovered that is good potential, see, we've got a bunch of low, medium, elite potential guys. Ooh, a couple of three bars here in terms of Markstrom, Lingette. Lingette's a low potential, so there's a lot of Americans, not a lot of Canadians this year. That's the weird thing. 
and read hello welcome in my man how's it going you see Zimmerman like we don't have a lot of great top pick Canadians this year and we'll hopefully figure out one or two along the way you know I like my Canadians kind of that Don Cherry-esque mentality so we've got June 9th we're going it's $12 now I went there two weeks ago oh wow and Mr. Sharks Finn welcome in glad to see you here today everybody making their appearance for the live stream glad to see that guys as we move up towards the draft we'll go probably get one more update on the draft centrist and you see Ottawa gets the first round pick so that makes sense Ottawa makes gets the first round yeah okay Chicago's in our spot from last year and then Nashville New Jersey Detroit New York so it looks like Chicago or Ottawa will draft Alexis Lafreniere uh, failed the team store needs to be a little bit nicer tried to upgrade it but failed I would trade for an early second round pick to grab one of those goalies early in second and then use your late second round pick picking 61st to grab the second that way you can get both of them and use your first round to grab someone else exactly that's kind of my thought and let's go view the draft class I was going to try and go late second early third but actually an early second would be a smarter move and Jesus cat almost turned off my PS4 on me you have a game today all right Reed, good luck in your game today and of course Shaden you missed the stream don't worry it's still up and available to be caught up on so it's not that long of a stream also Koskinen needs to play next game yeah no doubt man Talbot that was a lot of mental errors on Talbot's behalf this last game brutal absolutely brutal and so it looks like Vince Byron has moved up and down has gone Cappaduca so there's a little bit of movement at the top in terms of Duchesne he's up to 15th and Neil Kulid is up as well so we'll have to see what that means review retired players I think Brodziak should have retired and let's go to all Edmonton Oilers and see who we have lost this year as I passed it along hold on pardon me wait are you an Oilers fan yes I am Mr. Sharksman you betcha so we didn't lose any buddies there and no goalies so Kyle Brodziak doesn't retire in my opinion we looked way worse than last year ah uh, you know what it's the first game of the year stretch it scratch it and it's all good but you can't throw that game away that's the problem do you have anybody you can give up for second overall after an error turned into a 91 in my franchise mode uh, I'm happy to have Peyton Krebs and having picked second last year anyway so I should be good sick of these Isaac, I'm gonna hide your hide your comment there. We just try not to use that language, that's for sure. So we're not trading Trenton. I don't know why we would trade Trenton. That's absolutely stupid of the scouts to think we would do that. Eggenberger Larson, we're gonna get back on the block because he's been brutal. And then of course we want to see if we can trade away nobody in there. We want to see if we can trade. Mr. Where is he? Matt Benning. Matt Benning, we need to see if we can trade him as well. So let's go find out as we go along into the draft. Quickly take a look at what we have in terms of draft and kind of pick our guys and scout who we need to last second, right? Sign Scout Dino. Don't know why we need to. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. View draft class and see what we've got going. Draft class. Uh, medium elite potentials we've still got Capaduca and Byron they're on watch list first like thanks Sharkspin definitely guys if you're enjoying the stream don't forget to leave that like just gives me a little barometer of how you guys enjoyed that's for sure so realistically we've got the two guys we need to go get right UG Dynasty how's it going today bud hope you're uh, hope you're having a good day hopefully you're getting some videos cranked out as well so let's get right into it the NHL entry draft right now right here see what goes on as we go Senators, Blackhawks, Predators, New Jersey. First thing we need to do though is offer a trade. And it's going to be Tobias Reader is who I'm trading. That's a big thing. I'm trading away Tobias Reader to go get us a man in terms of, okay, right wing. And Tobias Reader, where are you? He should be all the way down here. I don't think he has much. Where's Tobias Reader? Is he a left winger? Am I using Tobias Reader all wrong? Yes, I am. Holy crap. Pardon me, Rampage. Welcome in as well. 
So let's go see actually who has a high third round pick. Pardon me, that's on me. That was my mistake at first. So New Jersey has the first round pick in the third round, but we want to go into the second round and see who we can get. So LA has that first round pick. Look at the trade blocks around the NHL. See trains. Their big guy at the draft. I see El Everly is on the block. Yeah, we could do that. Trading block. Bailey is also on the block. But I don't really feel like uh, trading for anyone, right? We've got a lot of young kids. We're going to have to get into the lineup this year. So 32nd overall, the LA Kings. And we're going to go move Mr. Tobias Reeder for that pick. Taves on the trade block. Yep. So let's go see what we have in terms to see what we can do. I think I'm going to give up Tobias Reader and next year's second, guys. This is my move. Next year's second and Tobias Reader. X Snipes Gaming, you're going to have to give me this. You're a pretty trade expert. First round pick on the third round. Yeah. I don't know. I, I say stupid stuff all the time and I really confuse myself with it. But Tobias Reader in a second rounder in 2021. Proposed trade. Trade rejected. So they don't like what they're getting here, boys. Are we going to have to step it up a little bit more? Tobias Reader, and you know what? We could go with one of our fourth round picks in this draft. We'll trade the 123rd overall and still trade rejected. So I'm not seeing much here. Maybe we can go move somebody we have in the rookie skaters category. As you can see, a car outer. We have a bunch of guys that I just don't want to give up, but Samarukov is a guy we could move that's for sure and see what they end up taking for it trade rejected so the LA Kings really don't want to move their move that so let's go see if we can get a pick still no pick from the Ottawa Senators yet we'll see who they pick right away here second round we want the first pick not going to get it so maybe the fourth pick from the Detroit Red Wings in the second round try to find a team who wants to move their second that way you're not helping there you go Bing bang. That is a huge one for sure. So right there, let's go. Oh, draft pick's been made. Who went number one? We're about to find that out right away. And they want our second rounder in 2021. Okay, that's good. And let's see if they want Tobias Reader as well. Detroit, tell me you want Reader. Yes, sir. There we go. That's a huge trade. 25 skaters for Detroit. That's okay. We can take someone back. Don't trade for that pick, it's not on the block. You can pay less for a team's pick that is on the block. Well, we just found that, right? We just found that right there. So let's go see who we can take skaters matching the block. We have an unknown Heronic. He's 22 years old, or we could take a Serial, but he's got a lot of stuff. So let's see if this trade will go through. Trade rejected, your offer fills our block requirements okay in principle but you seriously overvalued what you perceive you're giving us okay Detroit come on play a little bit of fair ball with me here you want to get rid of those stuff I will get rid of it for you you just have to give up a little of what you're asking trade rejected still boy Sorella is 18 though yeah um, so hmm tough question do we move our third round pick I really don't think we do but we're moving up. Yeah, like, see, I really don't like that. Tobias Reader, a second and a third. That's a lot to give up for this pick, guys. What do you think? I don't know. I need, I need some kind of idea on this X if you want to get in here. This one's a tough one. I'm just, I'm just going to hit it, see what happens. Trade rejected. So Detroit still doesn't want to deal their second round pick. So let's go see what ended up being the pick. It was Dante Scott. Trade your third and fourth this year. Well, we don't want to give up too much, right? Although we do have a lot of great uh, great players. Try without Reader, we could do that. So Dante Scott is the pick, so that means Alexis Lafreniere is the next man up, that's for sure, in the second round. Switch, put someone from Detroit who has a high salary for one year. Yeah, I don't want to take on any salary, though, because we've still got a lot of guys to re-sign. So we're kind of doomed, right? I, I need to get young kids out and I need on the ice, and I need to move out salary. So let's go see if Dallas's pick is on the block here. Yes, sir. Okay, Dallas, seventh overall. Let's see what we can do. Let's try Tobias Reader. It's he's going to be there. We'll try Tobias Reader, and then we'll try without him. Then don't resign them. Uh, but the problem is we need to resign a couple of guys that are key to the team, right? And I've already resigned quite a few. So 
It's not that I don't want to re-sign them. It's they still fit in the organization. Drake Kajula is a guy. We're going to lose 1.5 mil. So we could take a bad contract. But uh, I don't want to give up anything. And I don't want to give up our prospects. I'm still young. I still want to see what I can do in terms of development. I'm kind of tying my own hands, I know. Since you're replacing him in the system, look at the goalie prospects he can trade. Now that's a, that's a move. That's for sure. Because we could end up trading somebody like an Olivier Rodrigue and then potentially our second round pick for the next season after that okay now you guys are talking my language goaltending is definitely where we're trying to target right so if we can build a strength there in this draft and give up a little bit to get a little bit we'll be good trade accepted there you guys go you guys figured it out thank you unrated you guys got it going so trades accepted Dallas accepts our trade so now becomes the question it's time to go make our trade. Alexis Lafreniere is a full on playmaker. Okay, he was listed as a two way forward, but we had that targeted way wrong. So let's sim to user pick, see if we get any trade offers. We do not, we have pick 30. They went with Payet, anyone on the board, medium elite, top six, top six, top nine, bunch of unknowns. I don't know why I have that many unknowns in the top first round. I should have that pretty well scouted, but for some reason I don't. The second year was a mess, that's for sure. So now we go make our first round pick and we go see if we can find somebody who's going to be an absolute gem. You see Capaduca and Byron are on that list. I, You know what, you almost have to choose Capaduca now, but he is scout ranked 42nd. So we're hoping that we can pick him up with our first pick in the second round. And now it becomes a question, not the second, do the third. RIP, I uh, know, it's all, it's all good. Like, it's all good. That second round pick isn't going to matter much next year. So now we need to figure out any of these guys here that we can pick up. Or do we want to go central scouting rank and see who we have available? Well, there's Schmalls. There's Heikinen, who's a medium top four defenseman, but we don't have him fully scouted. Top six, Shannon Myers, two way defenseman. Guys, sort your scouts by rank. By scouts rank? Sort by your scouts rank. All right, we'll see what you guys have coming up. And we have Baron, who's medium. Oh, medium AHL top two defenseman. He's no offensive defenseman, though, so this could be an interesting one, right? He's scout rank 26th overall. What do you guys think? Do we pull the plug on Heikinen, or do we go with Baron? Let me know. I think there's an easy pick here, and I think it's uh, going to be Heikinen, but I need three or four votes for Justin Baron, three or four votes for... Passy Heikinen. What do you think? Heikinen? You guys are taking Heikinen. All right. So that's the first vote for Heikinen. I'm going to throw up an ad here and you guys are going to make your picks as we go along. Let me know your decisions, boys. Because I really like this Passy Heikinen kid, but he's small. Whereas this Justin Barron kid looks to be an absolute monster. You see, what do we have? A minus, H hold off two. Both shoot right, but Baron is bigger. Baron's bigger, right? That's what I'm. That's what I'm liking. I really like that Baron is bigger. Passy hiking in only five foot ten, one ninety one. You see, he's equivalent to Kevin Shattenkirk, though. That's a good thing. The Finnish kid. Okay, so that's one vote for hiking in. I don't know where you stand on rated origins. Let me know. But this is going to be a tough first decision. That's for sure. And we only have thirty four seconds to make it. You just didn't scout him. He might be better still. All right. You guys are going with Justin Barron. We have to make our pick. We're going to pick Justin Barron, see what he can do for us. We won't know until the preseason either which way. Let's sim to the next user pick. And with the seventh overall pick in the second round, the Edmonton Oilers are proud to select. Look at that. He's right there waiting for us. From the U.S. Central region with a 9.08 save percentage, and a 291 goals against average, 28 wins in 66 games, and equivalent to Patrick Roy, Lee Capaduca. We got you guys know we had no qualms about making that one. You know what the next pick is going to be. That's an easy one as well. Sim to user pick. See what we can get with the 30th pick in the second round. The Edmonton Oilers will be proud to select Jacobs. We really should select Jacobs here. Another defenseman, two-way defenseman, but. We're not doing it because we're going to go out and get ourselves Vince Byron, who in this situation is equivalent to Roberto Luongo. 
wood mesh while in any locker room has a very well-rounded personality and there you guys go that was the plan all along to make our second round picks both goalies Vince Byron medium franchise no we didn't sorry I should have waited a few seconds but that's all right sorry on rated origins you see uh we don't have any other medium franchise stuff so we are good I'm gonna take that Vince Byron in the second round should have probably taken Jacobs there but I couldn't afford to lose Byron, so let's sim the user pick and see who is on the board. We're drafting ninth overall. Let's see, is he on the board still? Ooh, look at that. Yes, sir. Okay, hold on. We are good because it looks like, by all accounts, Jacobs is still on the board, if I'm not mistaken. If not, we've got Pettinger. And so we want to go by Gems. Come on, give it to me, give it to me. So Malden's there and Pettinger's there. Welcome goalie depths. Yeah, exactly. So top six, low potential for Ryan Malden. Five foot ten. He's a two-way forward, 20 goals, 24 assists. Not equivalent to anyone. Pettinger, not equivalent to anyone either. Top four, deep potential. We haven't drafted a forward yet, boys. I think we gotta go with Malden. Let me know what you're gonna say. I'm gonna reply to Thrash right quickly here. We'll be good to go with. What do you guys think? You guys think Malden? Okay, Jake, you're going with Malden. I think, I think it's not a tough test to go with Malden here. Five foot ten, kind of a Kyler Yam motor type player, and I mean, you see top six potential. He's B, C's across the board. Lack size, reach. That's only weaknesses. Both would end up in the HL, so you need to remember D or forward depth. While well, we do need forward depth actually in the AHL because we're going to be moving quite a few guys up this year, so I think you got to go. With Ryan Malden is what you guys are saying. So we'll take Malden in the third round and Sim to user pick in the fourth round. And who's on the block? Blackhawks trading block appears to include Taves. All right. So now becomes the question, do we make that move to move Matt Benning? I don't think we do. Fourth round pick. See if there's any more gems available for us. We've had a couple of gems come up and be available but no nope, nobody there so that's unfortunate nobody on that side of things anybody in the elite company you've got Erickson you've got Wingles and you've got Party Cody Party is another goalie we don't need him Wingles is another goalie and Erickson is a defenseman who would be in the AHL next season so we'd have to not sign him for him to be able to play and grow somewhere else tough call well, what are you guys thinking? I'm thinking it's between these top guys, unless our scouts have somebody else who's highly rated. Well, you see, Ribeiro, Philip Ribeiro is on the list, okay, at 119th overall. Or you could grab Anthony Tabak, who's a 6'6. Oh, God, this kid looks like a monster. 6'6 power forward, AHL top six potential. Or you could take 6'4 power forward, Stanley Waite. Hmm. Hold on, what is Wade's stats? Yeah, let's go find those out. Seven goals, 31 assists, 36 penalty minutes, minus two. His skating's an E, but his shooting's a B minus, and he's equivalent to Patrick Hornquist. So this kid looks good. This kid looks really good. I don't know anyone else that we could pick up. I mean, Reinhardt's there, Party's ranked there, and we don't need more goaltenders. So that's the tough test, right? So. It's between Tavik or Wade, I think. Both wingers, both guys that could really grow, and I think Tavik would be a guy you could keep in the in the minors for another season, and he would be really helpful down there. Stanley Wade, all right, you guys are going with Stanley Wade. Power forward with bad physical, though. Yeah, that's that's Stanley Wade. Yeah, you see C physical. Well, physical is C. I'm not too concerned about that, but uh, tanks. So you guys are going with Tavik. All right, it's between Stanley Waite and Tabak still, guys. I don't know. I think uh, I think we got to go with Tabak here because Tabak, you see, B minus physical, B shooting, C minus, and only a D D D offense or defense. Holy crap! I am I'm just not speaking languages today. Offensive consistency, offensive creativity, and playmaking. So really. He's only a guy that has a shot, right? That's all you have. And Stanley Waite is 19 years old. Guys, you were going with it. 
Anthony Tabak, we will get him into the system. Yes, sure, he's only AHL top six potential right now. And somehow we have the 31st pick. So let's go take another pick, shall we? Make another pick. Maybe we can take both. Do you want to take both Stanley Wright, Wait and Tabak? I think it makes pretty good sense, doesn't it, to take Stanley Wait right now? Can grab them both, yeah? You know what? Let's make the pick. And right there, so that moves us into the fifth round. We don't have a pick until the sixth round. And now St. Louis takes Zari. So in the 30th pick of the sixth round, we've got to go find somebody who's kind of a steal at this point, right? Scout rank, anyone that they've got scouted rank. Well, 184, it's in Dale Jenner. And let's see the central scouting rank. Yeah, so Dale Jenner looks to be the best player available. But I don't know who else there is to choose from that we could really go find. See Wesley's medium low elite. There's Quinton Bear, who's 18 years old. Deep t D man, he's a D man, offensive D man. And you see, we are pretty good about his character, his work ethic, but his mobility, his strengths. We really don't have this scouted. Wesley is maybe elite. He could be, right? We don't know. So, um,. Yeah, it's a tough decision. Or you could go with somebody we feel a little bit more comfortable with in Curtis DeLuca. But I think it really comes down to Wesley. I think we got to go with Wesley on right now. I'm going to go with him. We're going to see what we can get out of Wesley. And now, guys, this one. The 30th pick of the 7th round. What do you guys think? Prowse? Greg? Anyone on here that we can possibly pick up? Any elite potentials? There's Mevis, Devin Mevis, who's still out there. Da high. Uh, he's a potential. Then you've got Petrov. There's a couple here, right? There's a couple good guys. But I think we got to take another D-man, and I'm going to take in the form of Steven Navis. It's going to be an easy draft, and that's as simple as it does. Sim, entire draft. We only have one more pick to go. The NHL entry draft is now complete. So we get Baron, Capaduca, Byron, Malden, Tabak, Waite, Wesley, and Mabus. So Capaduca and Byron, both guys we are able to pick up. That's huge because they are big time guys for us. So let's go see what we have in terms of contracts. We have nine contracts ending soon. That's it. That's all. And realistically, it's not that hard to see who we have losing contracts. We have Jesper, Jesper Faust, who we're going to just let him go. Ryan Strom, we got to re-sign him. Kyle Brodziak, we got to make sure he stays here. Or actually, I think Brodziak can go. Kazian, we're going to keep. Benning, we're going to have to keep. And Bear, we're going to have to keep. Because what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to trade away Adam Larson in free agency. And then bring in somebody who can play defense with Oscar Clefbaum that isn't Darnell Nurse. So, got a couple of guys here. We're going to sign them now. Jesper Faust isn't coming back. But, you see, Ryan Strom wants 2.8, so we'll give him 2.8 for a couple of years. Uh, Kyle Brodziak, Mr. Zach Cassian, yes, we want him back for 1.9. Just keep that extra 25K, right? And Matt Benning, let's see what he wants. He wants 2.75 for a year. We can give him 2.75 for a year. We've got the space, right? We've got 12.5 in cap space, especially once we lose those guys. Do the 85% trick. Well, this is thing is unrated. When you're re-signing in the before the re-sign stage, just in the extension stage, you can only usually go a little bit off. The 85% trick only works in uh, the re-sign stage. So we're trying this, and we're going to see what it does for us. Goaltenders wise, we have one goalie to re-sign, and that is Miko Koskinen. Offer contract extension 1.5. Oh, 05 million yes sure we will sign him for that see these are reasonable contracts that's why I'm not too concerned about it so we are good to go we should have those guys re-signed and ready for us to get this going and then anyone who hasn't re-signed we'll try and re-sign them in the re-sign stage contracts for following scouts have expiring contracts all right so we got to re-sign some scouts as well Let's see, scouting, currently scouting contract years. So Yves Trudeau has no contract left. We'll give him a two-year contract. 
All right, and anyone else? Cam, he's been good. He's found us some really good ones. All my videos saying that I'm playing NHL 16, not 19. Well, you have to go find, uh, what do you call it, NHL 19 at the bottom of the list. It's for some reason not on there. So six years, Robin Takahashi wants, and anyone else that needs to be re-signed, we are good. Scouts are re-signed, we are good to go. And today is the re-sign stage, we are good. Costin offer rejected, not interested in extending the offer, accepted for Benning, accepted for Strom, accepted for Cassian, Bear, and there you go. So that leaves us with how many guys to re-sign? I don't really think that many now. As we'll go see, view contracts. And this is going to be an easy decision, right? Who we have to re-sign and who we don't. Nugent Hopkins is a free agent after next year. We're going to be able to get him for less than six mil, I think. So you see Stanley, Waite, Wesley, Barron, bunch of guys we haven't signed. We don't exactly have a lot of contracts to sign them, that's for sure. So it looks like we got everybody re-signed up front that we want, other than Ty Ratty and Jesper Foss, but we want to get Ty Ratty in there and back into the fold because he's been serviceable on the bench for us. He didn't get into much playing time. That was unfortunate, but we really didn't have any injuries last year, which was huge. So Jesper Foss, Kyle Brodziak, we're letting them walk. And then in the system, actually, you know what? We should probably re-sign Kyle Brodziak just to have another centerman. For 1.2, I'm going to sign him for 1.175. Offer that contract, and we are good to go, boys. I think Kyle Brodziak is going to be of some use to us this year if we get an injury and let's make sure we've got everybody re-signed from here on out it goes all the way up to Connor McDavid's 12.5 million and goalies you have of course Koskinen so we have to go re-sign Koskinen offer contract for one million dollars see if he'll take it I don't know why he rejected our other offer but Koskinen's a weird guy he went all the way to free agency without asking for a contract last time so we can't exactly be too concerned about him. Let's go a couple days up to the 29th. See if we re-sign the guys we need to. And Connor Cam, happy. Kyle Brodziak, offer rejected. He has decided to try the free agent market this offseason. Ty Ratty accepts his offer. So do we actually end up going with Stuart Skinner in neck next season? Ooh, that could be an absolute interesting little intriguing time for sure. So we've got everybody... Resign that we need to. Ty Ratty resigned, so we are good to head into free agency. And now, Pro Scout on the trading block. Let's see what we can get. I think we've got our trading block updated to include Larson. Let's go find out, boys. Let's go find out. So let's see. We've got view contracts. Okay, view contracts, and I'll kind of show you what we have in terms of centerman. You've got Dry Sally Yamamoto. Like everybody is back, right? You've got Kara if we need to scratch him. And then in the system, you've got Gambardella, McLeod, and Hebig. McLeod's growing big time. He's up to a 74 overall already. So you've got to kind of look out for Ryan McLeod to join the team some point next year. And then the main roster at left wing, you've got Krebs, who's up to a 77 already. So Krebs keeps growing. You've got Egenberger and Johansson. So right there, you've already got your left wing. And Kajula goes back down to the minors. In the system, you've got Yakov Trenin, so now becomes the question about the right wing. And you've got Brad Malone up there, but in the main roster, you've got Pugliarvi, Bjorkstrand, Kazian, and Raddy. So you know Kazian and Raddy are going to sit on the bench. Bjorkstrand's going to be up there, Pugliarvi. So that allows us to actually have Yakov Trenin up on the team. So this is going to be good. We're going to be fine. I think everything's going to work out. The only concern I have is signing a defenseman that can actually play hockey for us because ideally I would like to trade Adam Larson. That would be my ideal trade. So let's go find ourselves a huge trade that we can either trade for a defenseman or find a defenseman in free agency. Let's go view free agents. Anyone got an idea? Hello from Brazil. Claudio, welcome back. Gra glad to see you. I can barely form the words to say anything to you, but either which way, glad to see you here today. So we've got a chance at Roman Yossi. Now, guys, I want to know, what do you think? Roman Yossi, would he be a great pickup for this team? Let's see what he's done. He has done 
Well, nine goals, 43 assists last season, 52 points on the blue line. That would be <clears throat> absolutely huge for us to get a defenseman who can score as well as Roman Yossi can. Imagine him on that top power play unit. I think Roman Yossi is the guy we got to go after. If not, then you got to chase after somebody like a Alex Petrangelo who has that 91 offensive awareness. Looks very good and full career stats while he had 40 points last season. So try signing Joe Valeno or Zadina. Problem is I would have to trade for them and we've got an even better guy, Claudio, in Peyton Krebs. Peyton Krebs is going to be a monster for us next season. And I mean for... A little bit less right you could get a guy that puts up 46 points in Justin Falk so guys let me know who do you think we should go after should we go after Falk Petrangelo or Yossi which one's it going to be let me know in the chat and let's see who we can sign in terms of a backup goaltender Matt Murray's there but we just need a nice solid backup Darcy Kampfer um, Austin Dell only wants 1.6 mil you guys think Petrangelo? Kyle, you're thinking Petrangelo. That's not a bad call. So I want a cheap backup, not Al Montoya. That's, heaven forbid, maybe a Calvin Pickard guy. And you know what? I'm going to go after Calvin Pickard here and sign him for $1.4 million. Give him the options. He's considering his options, but I think he'll come. Anderson for goalie. Yossi, you guys are saying Yossi. Okay, guys, I need to know. What are you guys thinking? I'm thinking Calvin Pickard's got to be the goalie for sure because you see... Craig Anderson, yeah, sure, he's great and all, but he's 39 years old. Really don't want to try and use him. So you guys, two of you guys have gone with Yossi. Okay, Yossi, not a bad pick. Not a bad pick at all. So let's go with Roman Yossi. Let's see what we can sign him to. We're going to sign him for 7.425. Let's see, he wants to see up five years. We'll go down and see actually at four years what he wants four years he wants the same so at 34 we're away from Roman Yossi we'll sign him to the contract offer it to him at least and see if Roman Yossi wants to be in Edmonton Oilers so we get our backup goaltender and our defenseman and then all that it becomes is trading Adam Larson for either picks or whatever we have to do you guys will have to let me know on that move for sure let's simulate the days along and see who we can end up getting so Roman Yossi is a contract outstanding I would love to see Roman Yossi join our Oilers Calvin Pickard joins the Oilers so we have our backup goaltender that's huge now becomes the question can we get Roman Yossi on the team Ooh, oh you greasy SOB man Roman Yossi goes to the Detroit Red Wings so now we gotta maybe trade Adam Larson for another D man but we have to see who else is available in free agency we probably should have went after one of the lesser known guys Right, but uh, now look at who's available. TJ Brody, 83 overall. Like TJ Brody ain't exactly what you're looking for in a defenseman when it came to free agency. 29 points last year. Yeah, sure he puts up the points, but I don't know. Do you guys think we should go for TJ Brody or should we trade Adam Larson for another defenseman? I think the quote very becomes Petrangelo. Is Petrangelo still on that list? I didn't see him there. Hold on. View, uh, view free agents. Sign Backstrom and trade Larson for a D-man. Well, I, I really don't want to do a sign and trade again, X. We did, uh, we did a sign and trade for Wayne Simmons, and he ended up winning the Stanley Cup, so we're not about to do that again. So, yeah, Nicholas Backstrom, 88 overall. We can sign and trade, but I think we're going to just trade Adam Larson for another D-man, and hopefully make it all happen so proposed trade no he isn't just saying you should have gone for him oh yeah I should have went for Petrangelo instead we got screwed going for Yossi I know tough go but we'll sign or trade and get a better defenseman somewhere look for Ryan Murray we could do that we could do that so Adam Larson has a lot of trade value now let's see who else we could throw in there we could throw and you see Salzer and Crowder have a lot of potential, but I really don't want to give them up. Um, anyone else that we could possibly trade? You can see we could move a Mavis kind of guy. So Mavis adds a little bit of value there. Let's go see what we can do. Keep Backstrom and trade Larson for Chickering. Yeah, okay, you guys are saying Chickering. Actually, let's go see if we can get Chickering. That would be an interesting move. Jacob Chickering, oof. Yeah, I don't think we're getting Jacob Chickering, boys. 
Look at that. That trade value is unreal. Um, so Arizona has nothing to offer. We're just going to go team by team, see if we can find Ryan Murray. I'd love to sign Nicholas Backstrom, but the forward stuff is just too clogged up, and we've got kids coming up that I'm not about to not allow play playing time to, right? So 50 points for Tory Krug. That's a lot of trade value. You see Adam Larson, Mavis, and let's see, Thomas Shabbat. Thomas Shabbat's possibly. We'll see what Tory Krug, if we can offer him. Guys, let me know right now. Do you think Tory Krug's kind of the way to go or not at all? We'll trade a 2020 second rounder. That pretty much evens the playing field. Let me know. They want a second rounder and Mavis. So guys, 15 of you there. Get your voices in. I'm thinking we got to go get Tory Krug. If that trade gets rejected, then we go see if Thomas Shabbat's available. Um, what do you guys think? Tory Krug, we'll come back to this trade right away. So Tory Krug's kind of the trade. We'll go over to Ottawa right now. What do you guys think? What do you think? Thomas Shabbat available? He won't save you cap. Yeah, I'm not trying to save cap, right? Because basically what I want to do, we have the cap, right? We had the cap to sign Roman Yossi, so the cap's not the concern. The cap concern was, of course, trading away in terms of Tobias Reeder and guys like that. So let's go see what we can get for Thomas Shabbat. Where is he? Thomas, Sh yeah, phew, not happening, not happening. So what's Tory Krug? Maybe you're bringing up a good point though. Tory Krug, Adam Larson's at a 4.170 thing. Look at New York Islanders or the Flyers. Okay, so, ooh, okay. Now I get your point unrated. Now I get your point, Tory Krug. Okay, so let's go see if we can find Ryan Murray. I believe he would still be on Columbus at this point. Let's see how high over the benchmark they are. He's only top 4D potential and only put up 18 points last year. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no to Ryan Murray. We need offensive points from our defensemen. So let's go see New York or the Flyers. And New York right there. They're at 75 mil. And they've got Nick Letty or they've got Johnny Boychuk. But Johnny Boychuk's 36 years old. He only put up 18 points last year. Ryan Pollock. Well, Ryan Pollock, 34 points out of 4.86. Hmm. Guys, this is an interesting one. Ryan Pollock could be actually an answer for us. And you see, we could actually let go of Mavis, remove him, and still have a very strong case to take back a seventh round pick from the New York Islanders. Yeah, Pollock, you guys think Pollock? All right, I'm gonna try and grease a sixth load of the Islanders as well. Let's go make this trade, Adam Larson. So we're giving up a second and trade accepted. The New York Islanders make the trade. So Pollock makes the deal. Right there, that makes us a little bit stronger of a team. Okay, so that's good. Pollock's on the team. That helps us out. We get defensive points. He plays up there with Clefbaum now. I think we've made all our moves. We got our back backup goaltender. I think we are good as gold. So let's go get into September. This is easy. This is done. Let's go see what we can do. Well, they want to make a trade. Do Arizona Coyotes want to trade their third for Cassian and our third? I don't think so. I know we're going to be good and you're going to be bad, but we're not about to trade away Cassian for just a third-round pick when we're giving up a third-round pick. To see a fourth-round pick for Cassian? Yeah, I don't think so. He's a bench guy, signing your rookies. See, the thing is, we're going to stop the ones you want to play in preseason. Here's the problem. We don't exactly have a lot of contract space. I guess I should have figured out that. We could have signed them later. We have 46 contracts taken up. Never mind. Hold on. You're right. We're good. Man, I'm not thinking. I'm just trying to get over with this so that I can get a drink of water, and I'm not thinking. It's Thomas, do we want him to play? Do we want Evan Pierce to play? You know what? We'll let those guys grow. So we want to see what Baron is all about. We'll sign him to a contract. He was our first-round pick, so we want to know. And realistically, the only other two contracts we have to sign in the system is it's a very simple formula. Go find our goalies and yeah, of course, Byron and the other guy. You see Byron, yeah, he wants 9.25 and Lee Capaduca wants 9.25. So let's go get those two in and now we have space for... Why didn't they... I'd like to join your team, but you have a full roster. OK, 
okay, what's what's going on here? We have 47 contracts. Huh. What the heck? So maybe it's time to clear house? I don't know. But let's uh, let's not worry about it. Sign rookies. We sign our rookies. We're good. So let's go get on to the start of the season. See what that does for us, and then we should be good to go from there. And we can always sign our rookies in the early part of the season, so we don't have to worry about that. We're good. Let's see what they can do. And Molden, third round pick for Kempney, and a third round pick. Ooh, they really want Molden, don't they? But we're not about to give up Molden. You already have five goalies. That's why you need to trade someone if you want to sign them. Ah, okay, makes sense, makes sense. Fifth round pick, I uh, don't think so. Gonna have to find out what we can do. Owner goals evaluated, nothing happening there. So we'll probably trade Dylan Wells and we'll keep one franchise goalie down there in the AHL August coming up. Kazian, fourth round pick and a seventh. I really don't see the value in that, man. We are trying to get taken for a ride for Zach Kazian. And Olvestead for Nick Letty. Look at that. First round pick and Callie Olvestead. <laughs> don't think so, buddy. Don't think so. Nick Letty's a good D-man, but New York Islanders, you're a good trading partner, but we got the guy we want. So I'm not about to give up my first round pick just to get Nick Letty onto the team as well. So let's go see what ends up happening here into September, and we should be good. And Kelly Olvestead, Nick Letty in a fourth. I don't think so. The Islanders really are intent on trying to get Nick Letty to Edmonton to play with Pulak. But season ticket drive, we did really well. 92% of tickets sold. Let's go see what we can do here. Available funds, added money, an extra 1 point or 0 0.134. And now we should be up into the preseason. There we go. So view Murn goals, okay, and roster moves for the upcoming season. Yes, we would like to move some guys around. So right now we have to go done. And there we go. So we're on the 13th. Who did you draft for the first round? I drafted that uh, Baron kid. So we already signed him. Now let's go view contracts. So we have five goalies in the system. That's going to be the problem, right? We're going to have to figure out what we're going to do with our goalies. You see Stuart Skinner, Sam Ronning, who's a fringe starter, 47 years old at that. But we can trade away Polzel. We can probably trade away Ronning. We're going to go trade away Pozel and Ronning, and we'll sign Capaduke and the other guy, and we'll see what those two look like. And then tomorrow, you guys will be able to catch a Thanksgiving episode of the preseason showing off what these kids can do. So let's go see. Look at Peyton Krebs all the way up there at 77 overall. This kid looks sharp as hell for us. And Pollock's only got two bars. Let's see who's fully scouted here. Um, Unknown and Wesley. Got quite a few unknown guys, but we should be good. Did I sign Wesley to a contract? Yes, I did. Okay, so let's go get our goalies in here. And you see Dylan Wells. We are going to hang on to him. He's been Eddie Steady Eddie back there in the AHL. So Pozel. And of course, let's see if we can move Ronning as well. That should give us enough goaltenders in the system. And that gives us decent trade value. Let's go see if we can dump them off to, say, the Toronto Maple Leafs for a team that only have four goaltenders. That's good, right? That, that works for us. Frederick Anderson, we don't have a scout on him. I don't know why. Either which way, let's go see what we can find in terms of maybe a rookie skater. Let's see what we can get, right? Somebody that we can bring in. Um, Gooley, see I don't have a lot of scouts on there, so you know what, I'm going to be safer and just take the pick. Take a, let's try for a second for these two goalies, but uh, Toronto would have more than 50 skaters in the organization. Okay, so I knew we had to take back a skater, see who they have, that isn't of much value. A Lindgren kind of guy, looks like he's a lesser value guy. And let's see if we can propose this trade. Trade accepted. So we get our second round pick for next year out of our goaltending tandem of Sam Ronning, or Stanley Ronning. And of course, Pozel, who we just signed for the heck of it last year. So in the system, let's go to the goalies. And now 
we get our chance to sign our two goalies, our two prize goalies. There you guys go. You see them get offered contracts here. Vince Byron, and he's joined. So now it's up to Lee Capaduca to join as well. And it's been a dream for him. So there you go. Two of our best picks in this draft have now joined the Edmonton Oilers. That's huge. That's massive for us. And now we go see who else we can sign. We have 48 contracts total. Now let's go find any contracts we need. We could sign a Malden, who's top six potential. And you know what? I think Malden and anyone else. Malden. Let's go sign him to a contract here. Even if he has to play in the AHL next season. And you know what? Wesley or Wright. Bunch of 18. You know what? Mavis, we don't really have space for on the back end. Tabak. You know what, we really need to see what Tabak's all about, so let's sign Tabak to a contract as well. There you guys go, that is as simple as it looks. I'll break down what the lineups are looking like at this point. Let's go edit the lines and I'll show you what the team looks like. So you've got McDavid, Pooley-Arvey, Johansson, Nuge, Drysettle, Bjorkstrand, Eggenberger, Yamamoto, Kajula, Ratty, Kara, Kazian. Where the heck? Okay, hold on. We've got guys that have to come up here, don't we? We've got Peyton Krebs, and then you've also got a guy like uh, Yakov Trenin. He's got to come up, and yeah, that's it. So Drake Jula fits in on that fourth line. That's going to be easy. That's going to be very simple. And where is Ryan Strom? Did we not re-sign Ryan Strom? Ah, he scratched. Okay, I don't know why Ryan Strom scratched. Hold on. That makes a lot more sense now, boys. As Ryan Strom is scratched as it stands. So you see Ryan Strom get in there. So this is kind of what the Oilers roster is going to look like. Come game time this year. Ryan Kyler Yamamoto down there. Bjorkstrand over there. Um, yep. Okay. Eggenberger and Nuge. So there you go. That's, that's the lineups, right? Nuge on that third line. And then you get Peyton Krebs in there for Drake Jula. And... Bing, bang, boom, boys. You've got yourselves an NHL caliber lineup for sure. Yeah, sure, it looks kind of risque, right? It looks kind of weird having, if you know what I mean, having these guys here, Yamamoto and Eggenberger up there on the second line, but they were absolute beasts for us during the preseason. Put down your top guns and bring up the randoms to treat it like rookie camp. Then before waivers, came, exactly, that's 100% what I'm going to do, but I'm just showing you kind of what the NHL roster is going to look like. Pulak with Benning. I don't know. I think I like Pulak who had, what, 50, 34 points. I think I like him up there more with Oscar Kleffbaum this year. So the NHL caliber is looking good. Defensively, we don't have any scratches, so we'll have to go down. And in the AHL right now, we've got Caleb Jones, Evan Bouchard. So obviously, Evan Bouchard or Caleb Jones is going to have to come up, and I think it's going to have to be Evan Bouchard. Keep the veteran experience up there. And starting lineups offensively, Trenin's at 75, Maximov, and Kali Olvested, who's up to his 68 overall. This kid absolutely just grew out of nowhere last year. Only had three AHL games and put up one goal and somehow ended up being 68 overall. This kid's going to be good. Safin, and we've got a bunch of guys as well on the bench. You see Malden's there, Korolev, Ovechkin. We're going to be good, boys. We're going to be good. So anyways, I'm Tyson, this is any TV guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shout out to whoever subscribed during this stream. I will catch you guys in the next one.